and also another uh, I have another question um like uh for uh for the occlusion nuances you achieve a very very high score and can you can you please like tell us how is uh how do you like achieve this higher this high score like 97 percent accuracy on occlusion We trained a seg segmentation model by MCT former. Um, we use the uh, we use the image net. We use the image from image net uh, that uh, the class in the Pascal, but not in Robin. Um, after get the mask, we just uh, random passed them to the image. Okay, so, okay, and that's a <laughs> that's a very good solution. Uh, thanks for the presentation. We will go to the next next presentation from the detection track. Thank you. Uh, okay. You you can you can stop sharing your screen. Hi, I'm glad to share our solution for the out of distribution generalization in computer vision challenge, shortly named as OODCV challenge. This challenge aims to enhance the detector's robustness to individual nuisance in real-world out-of-distribution shifts. The setting for this challenge is training on images without OOD nuisance and testing the detector's performance on images with OOD nuisance. There are six individual nuisance factors shape, pause, texture, context, weather, and occlusion. To make this challenge fair, only official data and the image net are allowed, and the model's accuracy on the ID test set must be lower than 79.9. Under the setting and rules, we proposed a generalized then adapt framework which firstly enriches the source domain as much as possible via strong data augmentation and weakly semi-supervised object detection by exploiting the image level labeled ImageNet, and then shifts the model performance from the enriched source domain to the given target domain via test time domain adaptation. Specifically, this framework is composed of a two-stage domain generalization part and a one-stage domain adaptation part. In stage one, a strong baseline is built against the domain shift, which compares different backbones and heads in the detector, and exploits labeled source data with various strong data augmentation strategies to simulate potential out-of-distribution data.
we compare six series of backbones, including ResNet, EfficientNet, and so on. As we can see, the large model performs better than the small model, and the current next series perform better than other backbones. So, we select the current next series as our backbone. Next, we compare different one-stage heads, as the table shows. The performance gap between different heads is small, and the DDoD shows a little better than others, which is selected as our head. Moreover, other heads are also used in the ensemble process. The final detector uses current next large as the backbone, DDoD as the head, and the FPN as the neck. After ensuring the detector, we exploit the data augmentation. We find the different nuisance benefits from different augmentation. So, we randomly select one to all augmentations added to the training image. One may be curious how to get the mask level image for mask level copy paste, we apply the weekly supervised semantic segmentation technology on ImageNet and got the semantic segmentation for the image from ImageNet. Thanks to the large backbone and the strong data augmentation, the source is enriched from the source domain to a wider domain to resist domain shifts, and our strong baseline can get 83.2 MAP on phase 1 test data. To further generalize the object detector, a subset of ImageNet is used as the additional data to enrich the source data with a weekly semi supervised object detection method based on class-specific pseudo labeling. Firstly, the pseudo boxes of ImageNet are generated by forwarding the weak augmented ImageNet dataset to the EMA model. Due to the image level class supervision prior, we only keep the pseudo boxes belonging to the corresponding image level labels. Then, the pre-trained model obtained in the first stage is further op optimized using the ImageNet and the Lobbing datasets. This stage enriches the detector model to a wider data domain, including Lobbing and the ImageNet and the performance is further improved to 85.3 MAP on phase 1 test data. After two-stage domain generalization, the detector has strong generalization, and then we shift the model performance from the enriched source domain to the given target domain because test data can use multiple times during test time training. A source-free domain adaptation-based test time training strategy is used to adapt the model to the test domain. A simple mean teacher-based self-training mechanism is used in this stage. The weak augmented test data set is fed to the EMA model to generate the pseudo label. And then, these labels and the corresponding data are used to train the detector with strong data augmentation.
After adapting the model to the testing domain, our detector can reach 85.9 MAP on phase 1 test data and 71.3 MAP on phase 2 test data. Although our single model can reach first place in phase 2, with the help of ensemble and test time augmentation, our final results can reach 73.9 in phase 2 first. As we can see, except for the contest, our method reaches first place in all the nuisance. All the reference papers are listed here. Thanks for listening. Okay. Um is it, a is a team here. Yeah, we use the same account as the uh, Yilugo. Yeah, okay. Uh so is there any questions from the audience? Yeah, I, I have a question for the, for the winner. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Uh, considering the performance of phase one, did you apply the domain adaptation on each nuisance separately or together? Also, have you compared the performance difference between applying the domain adaptation separately and together during phase one? Thank you. Hmm? Maybe you, uh, um, a little question about the question. Uh, uh, was, I will repeat uh, my question. But oh, do you need, thank you. Oh, all right. Considering the performance of phase one, did you apply the domain adaptation on each nuisance separately or together? Also, have you compared the performance difference between applying the domain adaptation separately and together during phase one? Uh, we using uh, we using the uh, data together, not uh, not split the each one, and uh, we not compare uh, these two methods. Thank you. Okay. So, is, is there are any other questions for the winner? Okay, uh, if there's no other questions, I think uh, that's the end of the child winner announcement session. And okay. Can I ask her a question? Okay, uh, okay. How can you change the detector in the uh, ID, uh, in the, uh, you setting the, Upper bound of this objective detection check is 79.9. How, how do you change that? Uh, what do you mean? For the ID performance? Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, will... yeah. Uh, the thresholds are determined on the phase one test set. And uh, I think uh it, the baseline is uh uh you setting the rulers the model the accuracy on the ID yeah I know I know uh, than... yeah we are training a model uh, five times and taking the main and standard division so this seventy nine is adding three standard divisions on the main value of the baseline model. So it will be higher than the baseline model. Uh, okay. If I remember correctly, the 
standard deviation is like three or four uh, percent, uh, percent. So uh, adding three times the standard deviation will be, will, will have a very large number for the threshold. Okay, thank you. So this also gives to the teams more freedom to like uh, yes. have <laughs> stronger models. It's okay. maybe also like a question to the participants and the winners. Is there anything you would change in the challenge for next time? Do you think it was too easy or was it too challenging or any feedback would be of course very welcome or did you like it as it was? So if you have any, any feedback regarding this, you could you know, let us know now or by email afterwards. We are more than happy to incorporate any feedback. Okay. okay. Seems not to be the case. Okay, uh, I will hand over to you, Adam. Well, we are. Uh, 20 minutes short of uh, before the next talk. So uh, let's stop here now.